Hey pals, I'm here today to talk about the books I put on my pre-order list in February last year, or sort of my anticipated releases list. And having had 12 months go by, I want to see if I've read them, and if I did read them, what I thought of them, and if I didn't, why have I not read them? I think there's nine books, I'm just going to crack on with them. And the ones I've read, I've obviously reviewed at some point, so I will link those videos down below. The first one is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth, which is a really chunky book, I think around 600 pages. And I had really mixed feelings about this one, which sort of matched my feelings about her first book, which is The Miseducation of Cameron Post, which was a contemporary YA book. Um, Plain Bad Heroines is an adult novel, and it's, I guess, a mix of contemporary and gothic historical. It's a super queer book, it's a super fun book, really mysterious, and there's some scenes that I found, I'm not a horror reader, um, but there are some scenes that I found particularly creepy. There's one scene in a bathroom which was like a bit horrible, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. So what I found about this book is it's split, it's a book of like two, two chunks. It's told from like an all-knowing narrator's perspective who isn't actually a person. Um, they're really snarky, there's lots of little asterisks where they're like, oh by the way, here's some juicy gossip about this character, or by the way, this person is going to come back into the story later. I really enjoyed that um, narrative choice. And this book is um, set in the early 1900s at an all-girls boarding school. I can't remember where, maybe in like New England? Can't remember. And this boarding school is sort of infamous because two girls are stung to death by wasps and a book is found by their body and then some sort of um, accidents keep happening after that and this same book is always found um, beside the scene of the accident so something that's sort of weird is going on and people start to question whether there's some sort of supernatural presence or some curse on the school. So you're following a storyline at that time and um, following two of the teachers who are in a queer relationship. This book is super queer by the way which is something I really enjoyed and then in the sort of present day there is a young woman who um, knows somebody who's like the descendant from that school and so she has written like a true crime book about all of that and for years she hasn't brought out another novel and she feels like this book is like this thing she can't overcome and she's never going to write again. She's really struggling but she gets offered the right for the film to be made, the book to be made into a film and that starts to happen and they ask her to come on set and work alongside the cast who are um, two actresses and one of them I think is bisexual and then our, I think the author is queer and there's sort of an interesting triangle between the three of them and some weird spooky shit starts to happen when they go on set to the actual school. I absolutely loved this book until the last 100 pages and what I find with Emily Ann Danforth in both books is she's incredibly good at the build up, she's not very good when it gets to like tying the plot up at the end and because there was a lot of, a lot of story really here and a lot of stuff to figure out it just felt at the end it just got a little bit messy and convoluted um, and it kept building and building to this like great reveal and when I got there I just felt a little bit like oh that was it and I didn't like like the final scene and um, I didn't like that that was where the book sort of ended up so yeah I would really recommend this book if you want like a fun gothic queer read because it was all those things um, but I just don't think the plot was super successful. The next one is The Memory Theatre by Karen Tidbeck so I've read this author's previous two books which were a short story collection called Jagannath which I read years ago and is super like creepy, feels like Alice in Wonderland but like violent basically and I really enjoyed it at the time but I feel like I've changed quite a lot of, as a reader since then so I'd like to reread it and see if I still enjoy that and then I thought the author's first novel which I can't remember the name of I thought was a bit of a failure and like disappointed me quite a lot. Now this novel is supposed to be like an extended story I think from Jagannath so it's it's set in a fairy tale world and I think it's all quite violent and horrific and effectively this book hasn't been published in the UK it's really expensive to get hold of it's not the sort of book my library would acquire because it just wouldn't be borrowed that much and so it's one of those books that's like always on my periphery but to spend that money on much money on a book I want to be really sure I'm going to enjoy it and I'm just not that sure so I think what I'll do is I'll reread at least a couple of the stories from Jagannath to see if I still like that type of thing and if I do then I will pick this one up but I just haven't done that in the last year. Then the next one is The Galaxy and the Ground Beneath by Becky Chambers. This is the sort of fourth book in her sort of connected universe series. The first one being The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which I loved when it came out. I can't remember when that was. Maybe like 2015 or 16? I absolutely adored it. 
I think that now maybe I wouldn't. I've read all of the other three. So first one I loved, second one I gave like three stars because I, I didn't think it was great. And the third one I felt the same. I felt like it was felt more like a short story collection. There wasn't enough of a story arc, I felt. So I gave that one three stars as well, I think. And I think I've just changed enough as a reader that I don't know if Becky Chambers is getting less subtle or that I just want more sort of subtlety now than I did a few years ago. Because she, these are set in space, they're sci-fi, and what she's good at is including a really diverse cast of sort of species who are culturally diverse and physically diverse um, and it's all very like accepting um, and I like that but I think she's so heavy-handed with it to the point where there's lots of info dumping about the physicality of these characters or about their culture like it doesn't seem like it she puts into the book seamlessly um, if you can hear a chair creaking it's because our desk <laughs> our desk chair is really creaking oh, Johnny keeps moving um, so apologies uh, so um, yeah, and also I just think she's really not subtle about the fact that, like, isn't this lovely and everyone's different? I think it's really uh, obvious and I think it um, slows down the plot and just makes me lack enjoyment. Um, so, yeah, I just don't think her books are for me anymore, but I am tempted to reread The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, maybe in, like, a spoilery vlog um, and see how I feel about it now. The next one is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Um, I got an advanced reader's copy of this from NetGalley and I also got an advanced reader's copy of the previous book so I didn't buy that one either. Loads of people love Open Water and I just think I'm not the reader for this book in two ways. So this is quite a short novel and it is about um, two, I guess maybe early 20s um, people in London. Um, so we follow it from the guy's perspective I think and so one, it, I guess it's commenting on the experience of living in London as a, a black man and a black young woman uh, but also as um, artists. I think he's a poet and she's a dancer and they sort of meet and it's just this story of, of um, their connections with one another but also I think this was a while, I tried this when it came out back in February so it's been a year um, and I think it's about like the difficulties they have with sort of talking to one another about what's actually happening like are we starting a relationship or are we just friends or like what is this and my two issues with this book is that one I just am not a fan of this type of beautiful writing style like I say a lot that I love beautiful writing and this book is beautifully written but for some reason that type of beautiful writing just doesn't work for me um, the author uses repetition a lot, which is something I find irksome, like when someone does something in a paragraph, some sort of structure of a sentence, and it's beautiful that one time I like it, but when they keep doing it, there was this thing the author kept doing, which I can't remember pr very well, but I think he, he'd say something about like the distance he was to her, like, and he'd maybe describe like the route or the buses or whatever, and he kept doing it, and I was like, you know, you've done it once, like we don't need to keep doing this. So the writing style just didn't work for me, but I completely see why loads of people love it. And the other thing is that, I don't know, like, I feel like I'm sort of over the whole, like, um, teen or sort of early 20s people who just can't have a fucking adult conversation about their feelings for one another. I'm okay with a book when somebody in the relationship is like toxic and awful and the other person's really insecure and like we can see that they should leave but they don't because I get that. What I struggle with as a reader is when we're reading about these two people that seem like they're sort of well adapted and could easily discuss their emotions but just don't um, and I think as a as a person I find that difficult to like relate to because Joanna and I have been together since we're 16, we've always been very upfront about how we feel about things, like both in our relationship, in our relationship with all other people, and yeah, I just find that I don't get it. Um, and the older I get, the less I'm interested in reading about people who just can't have a conversation about how they feel about one another, so just not for me. And then the next one I've just read, and that is We Run the Tides by Mandela Vida. So the reason I wanted to pick this one up is because it is a novel about two young girls, I think they're about 13 or 14, um, and this um, one year in the mid-1980s and they live in San Francisco in quite a wealthy neighbourhood that sort of overlooks the Golden Gate Bridge. And I love stories about young girls and their friendships, um, especially when they're set across like a small period of time when something happens. And so I like the sound of this one. So I was aware that this was one that I kept not buying like all year and I knew it was on this list, I could remember that it was 
it came out in February so I bought it this month to read it in time for this video so um, I have sort of snuck this one in and I finished it a couple of days ago and what I'll say about this is that initially I really liked it I think if you enjoy what I've just described sort of girlhood um, if you're interested in reading about books set in the 80s and maybe you're interested in San Francisco then I think you'll probably like it um, basically we're being told the story th from the perspective of a girl who's obsessed with her best friend um and like they have this sort of falling out over a disagreement and then something happens which i don't really want to spoil um and then the plot sort of goes from there this is quite a short book it's around 250 pages you could easily read this in one sitting it's like super readable uh what i'll say about this book is before the plot really kicked off i really enjoyed it just as a slice of life of like girlhood um, especially when they're from this um lots of wealth and privilege and they go to this private little girl school um, and just the ways girls interact with one another, I, I always find that fascinating. Um, but there is a sort of overarching plot to this book, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say there's a couple of so, so the police have to get involved, okay? That's what that's what I'll say. And there's just a few points in this where things happen where I questioned, like, number one, I don't think the police would interview you when your parents weren't there, and number two, like, some of the stuff that happened their parents like just let them go to school the next day before properly talking to them about it and I just don't think that would happen um so yeah like if you grew up in San Francisco in the 80s then feel free to correct me if you think that like it's a common thing for example for a police to come to school and interview you without your parents there like or like even without an adult there like sometimes asking the teacher to leave the room I find that weird um so those sort of things just fell apart for me and I also just felt like the, the plot the story wasn't that satisfying so it ended up being like a three star read the next one is night shift by Chiara ladner and i haven't read this one yet i was always a bit dubious about whether this one would work for me because this is about a woman who switches to working in the night shift and she becomes obsessed with the woman she works the night shift with and it's this sort of dark tale of obsession and i sometimes struggle with reading stories about characters who are sort of i don't mind unlikable characters but i find that a lot of the time if you have an unlikable narrator or sort of protagonist that's quite often paired with authors who have quite a cold and detached writing style I don't know why but those things tend to go together and I really don't like cold or detached writing style or like I'd describe it as sort of clinical or quite a clipped writing style that's not something I'm into and I was always a bit wary that this is what that bit was going to be so I wanted to wait for more reviews and I've just heard none like I haven't seen anyone review this yet in a video um, I have seen my library have just bought a copy and I asked them to buy a copy and they said we're going to wait until the paperback comes out so it's taken like a year so I probably will borrow it at some point but I'm not in any rush because like I said it was one I was always a bit like unsure so if you've read it let me know your thoughts on it the next one is and I never know how you say this bestiary by Kay Ming Chang I borrowed this from the library and literally within two pages I was like this isn't for me this was always one I was a bit dubious about because back in like 2015 2016 I used to love reading books that were sort of absurd um, like magical realist or like fantastical or, or um, sort of based on um, folklore or fairy tales and those sorts of things and that is sort of what um, best story is and that's not something I'm as into now um, but I was intrigued by it because it's about a culture different to what I've read in those types of books however um, I read the first few pages and something I really don't like as a reader is when I feel like the author is trying to gross, gross me out like when an author purposefully talks about things like um, piss or like not even like because I don't I'm down for vulgarity and I don't mind books being like upfront about like people having a piss or a shit like that doesn't bother me what I don't like is when I can tell the author is trying to make me disgusted by people when they're trying to make me feel disgusted by like normal bodily functions or like disgusted by somebody's like physicality I don't like that I find it like unkind and mean and and yeah I just don't want to find people disgusting um because that isn't like how I feel in in normal life so yeah within two pages I could tell that like that's how she writes um, and so I would just return it to the library immediately although beautiful cover so that was a shame then Kololo Hill I did buy a copy of this by Nima Shah um, but it is in a box somewhere in a cupboard because all my books or most of my books are packed away I at the time gave this book three stars this is um, a book that is set in Uganda and then in England during the reign of Idi Amin when he made all Asian Ugandans leave Uganda 
um, when we follow a um, an Asian Ugandan family who have to flee um, and they make sort of different decisions and we're predominantly following the story from a young wife's perspective she lives with her husband her husband's brother and her mother-in-law um, and also they have like um, staff in the house who are um, black Ugandans and in large part there's a storyline where she's starting to distrust her husband she thinks he's doing things that could put them in danger and they have this sort of big disagreement about whether or not to flee Uganda um, so that's a large part of the storyline their relationship and whether it will sort of survive this big um, change and another part of the storyline is they have um, a, a man who's worked with them for many many years so the mother-in-law has great affection for him and um, they are concerned that he will be targeted um, because of his sort of cultural background his ethnic background um, and so they're trying to sort of protect him but that's something that could get them in a lot of trouble so it's this sort of debate between certain members of the family who think they should like kick him out and just let him fend for himself and other members of the family who don't so part of this book takes place in Uganda and like I said part takes place in England and when I finished this book I felt a little bit disappointed in that it felt like one of those books that was like a solid read it felt like I, I think it felt like more of a commercial book than I was expecting it to. I think I was expecting it to be a bit more literary. And what I mean by that is it's like super readable. Um, it's a book that I think I could lend to a lot of people who like don't read very much at all and they probably enjoy it. And they wouldn't find any sort of pretension in the writing style. Um, and also I felt like it didn't do anything that new. Like the writing style wasn't trying to do anything different. It wasn't particularly beautiful or sort of noteworthy. And um, you know it felt like it was telling a familiar story with familiar themes the ones that i'm interested in but it didn't feel like it was sort of pushing any of those themes or making me think anything i hadn't thought before so i felt a bit disappointed but actually having had like a year gone by since i read it i can really remember the family and i can really picture scenes in this book still um in particular i think when they get to england that was an interesting story because a lot of times you sort of hear the narrative about them having to leave the country but not the narrative of them having to settle in a new country and or you get one or the other and you don't get both in the same novel um so i thought that was interesting and yeah i think i probably would pick up another book from this author and i think this would probably be a really good like um, mini series like a bbc mini series so i would i would recommend it and the last book on the list for february was madam by phoebe Wynne. from memory this is a book set i don't know when but it's historical and it's supposed to be quite gothic um, and it's set in an all girls boarding school and it said it was gothic and filled with sort of feminist themes and like a bit creepy and I love the sound of that but it's got awful reviews it's sitting at like 3.20 on Goodreads I think which is really poor and um, in the reviews people said that it was a bit nonsensical I think it's based on a uh, Greek myth which I didn't realise and I'm not massively into that and so yeah heard not good things but I have just seen my library have bought a copy of the paperback so I might be tempted to just like borrow it and have a little read of the first few pages and see if it works for me so we shall see so let's have a little look I think that was nine books one two three four five six seven eight nine yes nine books and I read in full one two three so a third of them and I enjoyed them all none of them got less than three stars then I started and DNF'd one two three so a third of them and then I didn't buy or start three of them so not as good as January I think I read nearly all of them in January um, so yeah I think this is like a mixed bag in terms of me predicting maybe like more on the negative because I only actually read three of them and even then two of them were three star reads and then three I DNF'd and three I have not been bothered enough to pick up so yeah didn't do great last February for my um, predictions but let's hope I did better for March we shall see in a month so let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them in particular the ones I haven't got around to picking up yet if you've read them I'd be really interested to hear what you thought and also let me know if you read any books that you were looking forward to last February and if you read them and what you thought about them Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.